<laughs> Welcome back, folks, to Fish and Planet. Today, we are doing the most underrated things in Fish and Planet. This was a really hard list for me. And, uh, you know, playing quite a bit in Fish and Planet, I've run across things that uh, definitely, I think, are underutilized. And we we have five. It was really hard to get to five. I think I had 15 to start with. But uh, I do have two honorable mentions before we get into it. So uh, I, I felt like this wouldn't be a complete list if I left off lakes. And it was really tough for me. There's a lot of good lakes, but I feel the underrated ones are Naharin, Kwanjkin, and Russia. And why why all these lakes? Well, because they have some really cool stuff from really big fish to little fish to offer, including Russia uh, and, and Naharin. But uh, for its level, I thought Kwanjkin at 26. It's the... Uh, lowest place as a fish at uh, basically 100 pounds, um, or I think 43 kilos. Uh, but there's just a lot here at this place. There, you have such a unique um, amount of different fish to catch. Obviously, you have teeth with the alligator gars. You have good catfishing with the flatheads and uh, the flatheads and the blue catfish. You have great pan fishing here. Probably the best small American fishing in the game with the crappies, the bluegills, uh, the red ears, and also, uh, not to mention, the freshwater drum are different, and uh, the smallmouth buffalo are different, and then, of course, it wouldn't be Quanchkin if we left out the bass fishing and the bass fishing is really good here just a super complete lake in my opinion and i think it gets overlooked quite a bit real quick the other honorable mention i don't want to spend too much time on this is rigs uh and and it doesn't matter any of them i prefer the texas rig but it doesn't actually matter uh the reason i find these really underrated is you can use them on any pole or any lure pole in the game, and you can kind of get whatever you want out of them by changing uh, whatever soft bait you have on them, whatever weight you have on them, so you can switch the weights to get it to kind of sink more or raise higher or cast farther. And then, of course, with the hook sizes, you can go all the way from 14 all as small as 4 all. There's such a, such a wide range you can do with rigs, and I feel like uh, down the road when people get more familiar with them, people will use them more often. Anybody familiar with the channel knows that starting off the list at number 5, the Zeus 810 is arguably, it's not arguably, it is by far my favorite pole. <laughs> and there's a few reasons for it. One, it's a, it, it's a, you don't have to be level 80 to get it or a max level. Uh, you can get it mid-range. It's really good for big fish all the way down to little fish. And uh, it has a really wide range when it comes to lures from three quarters all the way to two uh, in an in a eighth ounce. And you can't even throw, put I put half ounces on it a lot too. So uh, there's such a wide range. And the biggest thing with it is you can change its recovery speed. So... All these reels here, including the ambusher that I uh, 8500, which I don't have in here because I don't really use it. It's uh, in between uh, the thunder spin and the Kraken on recovery speed. So you can go to top water really slow if you want, all the way down to this thunder, um, the thunder, uh, the thunder spin 5500, and as fast as the spot 9000. I mainly use the spot 9000. But very easily, um, this is the pole I've caught most fish with in Fishing Planet in seven years. It's actually not even remotely close. I think the next pole, well, not this Zeus, but this Fire Zeus, which is the same thing. It's just got the fire skin on it. Um, the only other pole that would even be remotely close to me would be uh, the Jig Winner uh, with the Bremer Reel. 
at number four, this was actually a little kind of tough for me not to put it a little harder but or higher, but there's a lot on this list, was the Falcon Lake Farm. So uh, for people that don't know, I'll try to remember to leave it down in the comments for you guys, but the video where I went through and did every lake per hour, what you can make at the level when you unlock it. And Falcon Lake stood out as being excessively good. Um, it destroys even the really big ones that people think of, like Emerald Lake. It's just a really good place, especially early gone. A very, very good uh, level place to level and gain a lot of money and just, in general, have a lot of fun. It is a fun lake. At number three, this was a very, very difficult one. I actually wanted to put it higher, but templates. Uh, I don't see anybody use templates. Now, of course, you can put them with your lures and poles, but I don't actually do this. Uh, I actually use them to set up plain poles to go to a lake, uh, you know, to a new place, and you can completely change up every pole and row really you have with you super quick. For example, if I wanted to go to a lake, uh, you know, a new lake. This is almost always a setup I bring to a new lake. And you can see really quickly here how fast this is. Probably within just a few setup or, you know, a few seconds here, you're going to see I'm going to completely change my bay bag around with almost uh, no effort here. I have a pole for everything that you could ask for basically in the game. And just within a few seconds already hooked up as you can see we got to do the ecuador match but there you go it only took me a few seconds and i just did uh you know i have a full pole two full poles a big and a little two bottom rods a big and a little and a, the complete wide range of lure poles on me now uh, definitely don't see a lot of people use this and this saves you so much time when switching lakes or just comps or whatever it is that saves a ton of time at number two this one definitely was going to be on the list guys uh for you guys that don't know recovery uh the recovery is arguably to me one of the most important mechanics in the game that doesn't get talked about at all and what that is is essentially how fast your line comes in at speed one and it affects all your different speeds. So, for example, here, this recovery. I'm not going to get too much in depth. I'll leave the recovery video and why it's important down below. This will just gloss over it really quickly for you. For a pole as a recovery of 31.5 inches uh, compared to, like, the spot reel, that means you have to have this pole on uh, this reel on two-speed just to have the same speed as this griffin spot guys uh, and the reason it's super important is if you are fishing uh with two speed on here you should be using the griffin spot on one or for example the kraken on three speed is the same as the griffin spot on one but this goes for all reels just not to set this one is just a good example because they all go on the same pole and you can see the differences in recovery and what a big factor it can make. Uh, I see this all the time, people using a Thunderspin or a Kraken. When, and other than tap water scenarios, you almost always want to use the Griffin Spot. Um, and, and I see that quite a bit. Also, on a side note with recovery, it plays a huge factor with baits as well because you're not really moving your pole in the water so when you hook a fish you want the recover to be as high as possible uh, so you can bring that fish in as quick as possible there's absolutely no reason to have a slow recovery on a bait pole whether it's bottom float carp whatever it may be you want the quickest possible recovery at the range of the pole that you can have now, before we get to number one, I definitely want to hear, as you guys always know, I reply to comments, unless they're absolute crazy, um, I reply to every comment, but I want to hear what you guys think of what would be on your list. Yeah, I mean, if it's something on here, or if it's something else, let me know below, because I'm really curious, 
because I know I'm missing stuff. I wanted this list to be 15 long, but I decided to do five. But anyway, at number one is the 4th of July lures. These, to me, are the most underrated ones in the game, especially among low-level uh, players that don't have it really come across them a whole lot. They are in the, the Fishing Planet Revolutionary Pack as well, um, but you can get them during the 4th of July. Uh, it, especially that pack is unbelievable money. Uh, it, that pack, for what you get in it, is to me the m most useful pack in the game, bar none. Even over the gold pack or any of the big DLC packs, while I love them, this gives you such a ride, wide range no matter what level you are, to go catch fish at any place. And to be honest, in my opinion, <laughs> not only are these the best lures, they're the ones that I put over X-Series. Uh, I like these even more than X-Series. For example, I have the X-Series uh, Worm and Shad and, and stuff like that, and I have a tendency in almost every scenario to go ahead and use uh, the the Patriot version of it, like the the rattlesnake worm. Uh, now this isn't everything that you know that's in the pack, but these are some of the more important items in the pack. This worm, arguably, I don't think anybody will argue that that worm is good. This rev, this saloon nymph, which is part of it, it as well, to, in my opinion, is as good as this X series nymph. I use them both the same. Hands down, to me, the best crankbait in the game. This is another, you know, this is a Star Spangled crankbait, and I don't even use my X-Series crankbaits anymore because I have this one. Uh, when it comes to jerkbaits, this is really the only jerkbait that I use, even over my X-Series one. And this one, I think a lot of people will agree, this might be one of the best lures in the game. This is the Patriot Walker. Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice today. Um, but the Patriot Walker to me is, I mean, it's by far the best walker, and you can use it at almost all lakes, really. And I use it quite a bit. And the Eagle Spoon for spoons, I think, for me, is as far as it goes, is basically the top of the top. And the Medium Spoon, which if you take this set up to Alaska, <laughs> You will definitely catch a bunch of uniques. But anyway, guys, there, there's so many more things in there, like the 13 arrows that I didn't even get to mention. Uh, I didn't want to drag it out too long. But just the 4th of July lures in as a whole. They are my favorite lures in the game, in my opinion. Uh, the best. Uh, and tell me what you guys think down below. But you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you next time, folks.